Hello, we're back to Eco Art with Mary. Um, I am an art teacher. I know a lot of you. Hi. Um, today um, we are going to do leaf insects. And you know, with Eco Art with Mary, we do three things we learn, we create, and we share. So, the first thing we're going to learn is how to do art with less. You know already that in order to help our planet, we need to reduce, recycle, and reuse. So this lesson is gonna show you how to do art with less so you can reduce and help our planet. So that's what we've learned. Now we're gonna create our um, leaf insects. And I wanna talk about what supplies you're gonna need. Very little. Um, I used a uh, bright colored paper for my background so it pops out so you can see my insects that I created really easily. You can use white paper, you can use no paper, that would be even better. You can use sidewalk, you can use lay it on um, your patio, um, you can put it on the you can put them on the grass, wherever you want. I used color paper just so you could see it really well. Another thing that I would suggest is, this is a cardboard tray that I got my tomatoes in at Trader Joe's. And if you wanted to do your leaf insect in a tray, then it would be easily movable. So you could display it in different areas very easily without it coming apart. So this would be a good source, um, a good thing to put your insect on too. The next thing you're gonna need is um, a tray. I use my kitchen tray with lots of nature on it um, to collect things, collect your supplies. You're not gonna use pencils or paper. Um, what you're gonna use is things from your backyard. So you're gonna walk around your backyard or your front yard. If you don't have a yard, just go to some place where you see nature and you're gonna collect sticks, rocks, leaves, flowers, buds, seeds, pods, anything that looks fabulous um, to create insects with. And here is what my supply tray ended up looking like. And here you can see I gathered my art supplies from around my yard. I have some sticks, some dried leaves, some fresh leaves, some cabbage leaves, some clover, a little bit of hibiscus, a little podocarpus, some dried camellias, some clover, and you know, anything that you can find that looks beautiful and interesting, put on your tray or in your bag and just have it ready to go to create. All right, so that's the materials that we have that I had to work with. Then the next thing I like to see the real thing before I create something and so what I did is I collected some illustrations of some insects so you can take a look at them um, let's take a look at them I lined them up all on my sidewalk all right here I have some insect drawings to give you inspiration spider dragonfly for what bugs you might want to create there's a stink bug Now, after seeing all these those insects, you can, of course, when you're doing this, you can pause if you choose to do a spider and really take a close look at it. It's very important that you get some of the details right. If you want your leaf or whatever you're using to look like that insect. So please notice the details, like you'll see a spider has eight legs. Also notice how many sections each leg has one, two, three sections with a little tip at the end. So represent that with your sticks if you're making stick legs. And on the subject of legs, notice if your insect actually does have legs. I think um, you could do, think about a caterpillar and not remember that it has legs too. So represent that, those legs when you're making that insect. 
Another thing to think about is wings. Um, here is an illustration of a dragonfly. And notice where the wings are coming from. They're coming from up on the upper part of the body. And also notice the proportion of the wings compared to the body. So look at those details before you start creating. All right, so let's take a look at what I did. We have a spider out of some rotten camellias, like really dried up old pink flowers and sticks and a rock. Here we have a dragonfly out of a couple sticks, a rock, and some leaves with leaves on top of them. Here we have a beetle with a cabbage leaf body, a rock head, some leaves for some wings, stick legs. And here we have a snail out of a hibiscus blossom and a dried up piece of bamboo. And here we have a caterpillar made of uh, succulent jade leaves and little feet that are sour grass blossom buds. And of course, you do not have to make only insects. You can get creative and do all kinds of designs like this one. All right, so you saw all the insects, you saw the beautiful design I did that's just flowers in a radial pattern. You can do anything. You can do trees, you could do abstract designs, just have a great time and create lots of cool things. One thing that I forgot to mention, if you're gonna be picking flowers and things that you think might not be a good idea to pick, make sure, ask your mom and dad or ask whoever's garden that you're looking at if it's okay if you gather these supplies to do this project in advance, beforehand. So you're sure that it's okay to be picking the flowers and picking the leaves. Um, all right, so that wraps up the lesson. We've learned about reducing our art supplies to create art by using nature. We've learned how to create them, looking at illustrations of insects. And now what you wanna do is share so other people can see how to create art in this way without using supplies, regular art supplies, and reducing their impact on the planet. So what I suggest is maybe you have all your insects going up the sidewalk in front of your house. So people walk by and they see them and they get the idea. Or you could take a picture and put it on Instagram or text it to friends and they can see how art is created out of very little. So have fun with this. Enjoy your yard, your front yard, your backyard and have a great day. Bye.